Hello, my name's Andy. Welcome to episode 43 of Keeping Water. In this week's episode, I'm going to be showing a little mini drainage sump I've made to solve a problem of cleaning the moving bed. I'll also be giving an update on the fish, their injuries and behaviour, and what the reasons behind them may be. Once again, many, many thanks to all the people who take the time to like, comment and subscribe. I really appreciate it. I sometimes take a while to reply to comments, but I do reply to all of them, eventually. If you're not yet subscribed, that's fine. There's no rule that says you have to. You can just keep coming back and watching. Views are as cool as subs after all. As long as people are watching, it makes the work I do in making the videos worthwhile. However, if you're thinking about subscribing, I release main episodes weekly on a Sunday morning and short clip videos during the week, nearly every week. And, and this may be a little known fact, if you click on the subscribe button, your fish will start making predictions about major sporting events. Mine, for example, think Chelsea will win the Champions League final and Simon Yates will win the Giro d'Italia. Right, let's get started. An issue with my moving bed that I've been putting off solving is how to drain waste water from it. It's got an outlet to drain the tub with, but due to it being quite low down, there's no easy way to drain it and nowhere suitable to drain it to. So, my solution is to dig a hole for an old container to act as a sump and then use my dirty water submersible pump to send the water to waste. To start, I cleared the pebbles from an area near the filter shed and actually did some measuring before digging rather than attempting to judge it all by eye, which I normally do. I then used a Stanley knife to cut away a patch of the weed membrane to give me access to the earth. Time for digging. At the moment I've got a troublesome frozen shoulder and lower back pain and in spite of the small size of the hole this seemed harder than digging the whole pond. Maybe that's why I measured it properly rather than guessing so I'd only have to dig the bare minimum.
quick stop here to check progress. I really want to dig as little as possible. I check replacement a couple of times before getting it right. At this point, my back totally gave up on me, but I was close to being done, so ploughed on while seated. Digging finished, as was my GoPro's battery, for some reason. Off camera therefore, I'd used pebbles to backfill, buried some pipe, replaced more pebbles, drilled a hole in the shed and connected the pipework to the moving bed drainage. Time for a test. No leaks, which was nice. I feel I need to point out that the water in the sump is dirty from the loose earth that fell in the moving bed water is lovely and clear. Test done. When I'm draining the moving bed properly, I'll place the submersible pump in it and pump the water out as I drain the bed. In a few weeks time, I'll do a video on a full clean of the filtration and go into everything in more detail. Finally, I added an old paving slab to temporarily cover the sump. As you may know if you watched episode 42 or clip 33, the mirror carp has lost a couple of scales and has a light scratch on the same side. The common carp also has a smaller scratch. They look reasonably healthy injuries as they're clean and don't look in any way infected, but they are still worrying as they may be evidence of other problems. My plan therefore was to do a fair amount of underwater filming this week to take a closer look. But my GoPro is randomly turning itself off and as I film by putting it in the pond for two hours or so, which is when the memory card gets full, it's a little annoying when it turns itself off after 10 minutes. So, as I was a little worried about the carp, specifically that the scratches and missing scales may be as a result of flashing, which if you don't know means the fish scratching or rubbing themselves due to irritation. I therefore used the CCTV to try to monitor the fish instead. I've watched them pretty regularly during the week and I'm pretty pleased to report that I saw no flashing at all, which is a good starting point, although not conclusive. What I have noticed is that the fish are really active. I always avoid attributing human emotions to them, but they've almost appeared overexcited at times, which could have worried me if I'd seen flashing too, 
But without evidence of that, I don't think, so far at least, that it's a reaction to any kind of irritation. It's hard to capture video of a fish with a CCTV. I'm not permanently recording, so I can only capture video when they start doing something interesting, which means I can often miss it. Therefore, I'll give some clarity about what I have seen, in case it's not overly clear from the video I've caught. The carp are swimming around the pond much faster than normal, darting away at nothing, there were no reasons for them to be spooked, and at times almost chasing each other. The rudd were behaving in a similar way, lots of chasing each other, really active, and, here I go again, appearing excited. One guess might be that the consistent warmer temperatures we've had in the pond, it's been between a low 12 degrees to a high 13 degrees. Not massively warm I know, but to my fish that have to suffer the chills of winter, unprotected by heaters or covers, it must feel pretty toasty. In addition, their appetite is really up and they've been feeding well, which would mean, I guess, they have plenty of energy too. But a comment by a fellow YouTuber on my Clip 33 video got me thinking. Chris Stubbings, who you should absolutely check out if you haven't already, I'll put a link in the description, asked whether they might be exhibiting spawning behaviour. I'd not previously thought about it, and I think it is still a bit cold for the carp. I think it would need to be at least 16 if not 18 degrees, but the rudd will spawn in much colder temperatures, from about 14 degrees upwards and around May and into summer. So I do wonder if their behaviour at least might be early signs. They're getting close in age and size to be able to spawn for the first time, and I'd be pretty happy if they did. Although after seeing the common carp have a quick test of the crucian's edibleness, I'm not sure any fry would last that long. Consequently, I'm probably going to be adding some spawning brushes into the pond to give them a safe area to spawn around. Additionally, I've set up motion detection on the CCTV. I may well have, due to bad luck, just missed the fish flashing. We also think we've heard some splashing early in the morning, which hopefully the CCTV will catch too. Repeated jumping may be a sign of a parasitic infection, so I'd like to be sure whether or not they're doing it. They're biggish fish, so even a quick tail splash as they spook away from something can sound as loud as if they were jumping. Coincidentally, or not maybe, the last time the carp had a period of jumping, I'd bought new fish a couple of months before. However, I'll not jump to conclusions without more evidence. If it is an infection, I have some constraints that some pond keepers don't have. With tension rudd in the pond, a lot of treatments I can't use, so my options are really limited. In fact, there's only one that I know of with good reviews of its efficacy that's safe for the non-carp in the pond. Anyway, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it and let you know in future episodes how things go. Hopefully, my GoPro will start working properly and not require treatment of its own. Although I worry that as it's old, I've had it for six years or so and it was second hand when I got it, it may be on its last legs. If it does work properly, I may be able to get a better idea of what the fish are up to and show it more clearly too. More about all of this next week. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Keeping Water. I really do appreciate it. Next week, I'll update about the fish's health show some more plant management around the pond and provide an updated pond plan for the rest of the year. Over the next couple of weeks, although I may not quite have time this week to include it in next week's video, I'm going to video how I clean my filtration, including using the mini sump I made this week. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.